for all those who appreciate the work that we're doing here on Standing for Truth, please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started. Anyways, it looks like Jensen decided to take his Y chromosomal baggage and apply it to something. That something being the history of anatomically modern human population sizes. So what did he do exactly? In his newish paper, Jensen says he used his Y chromosomal mutation rate to create a family tree and then takes all of the males from that family tree to try and estimate a population growth throughout history. He rounds this off by saying his curve matches the one we see from historians. You can't use any of that to generate a population size. Not like you can't use any of that because you know, you would be using uh, evolutionary assumptions or something like that. Like, you can't do it because it's a patently nonsensical method that just doesn't work based off of the principles of math and population genetics. Let me show you what I mean. Looking at this picture here, which tracks the male inheritance of numerous human lineages, we can see that by the fifth generation, the entire population represents a single paternal line. If we were to use Jensen's methods to extrapolate this backwards, we would get a population of one and not the real population, because not all men have sons. So if this is really the case, and it really, really is, why is Jensen claiming his method, ugh, need a chaser after that one, works and generates curves that matches those historical records? Great question. Now I already know the answer, but allow me to lead you there, like the ferryman Gibbon of the River Styx. You won't like where we're going, but don't worry. I am here with you. <sighs> First and foremost, it should be noted that Jensen's force fitting of the Y chromosomal tree to his model means that many human populations diverged from one another after the year 1500 AD. Hey, pal, you just blowing from Stupid Town? No, I'm not kidding. Jensen admits to finding this rather shocking in an interview with the big daddy himself, Ken Ham. The sort of national identity just a few hundred years ago. That's one of the shocking results of the tree. You know, Dr. Jensen, I think even Christians who believe God's word and even believe the chronology uh, taken from the Bible of the flood 4,500 years ago and so on, I think they, they, they tend to, I think most people tend to think of, oh, these cultures just go way back and they sort of forever existed. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I don't think people think of that recent 1500 AD to think that before that time, you're saying all those particular groups didn't really exist as ethnicities. I mean, that's sort of mind boggling be just because of the mindset we have, I think. And the collaborator I was working with on this project, we nearly gave it up once we saw some of these initial results because it so strongly contradicts what we all take for granted and assume. This is pretty par for the course with creationists. They tend to take fields and place them into a vacuum, assessing them alone rather than with the preponderance of other data. In this case, the same archaeology that allows Jensen to try and fit the Y chromosomal tree to his model via estimated population sizes tells us that the groups he supposes popped into existence in 1500 AD were around for far longer before that. But he considers the archaeology apart from the genetics and only applies the former to the latter when it suits him. Guts at Gibbon is not a geneticist, and this is more than clear given her rebuttal here. So the points she makes are not well stated, clear, nor accurate. She's just blindly repeating what she thinks she understands and knows from others, mainly the peaceful science posts and blog. Her first point she brings up is that Dr. Jensen can't get a population size from his method. This point is actually virtually verbatim from Peaceful Science. 
Her justification is basically the same as well. The justification itself is factually in error. Her coalescence illustration, for example, the differently colored people showing how lineages change over time, shows what happens in constant-sized populations. It's a poor critique for many reasons. Here's a couple of them. Dr. Nathaniel Jensen's method actually does correctly infer this result. Again, Gutzik Gibbon is just blindly repeating what someone else wrote, and this is incredibly clear. Whoever that person is that she's repeating the argument from has no clue what's actually in Dr. Jensen's papers and work. Most of human history involves population growth. Let me emphasize that word, growth. Standard methods of inference of population size assume a constant population size, derive equations on this basis, and then modify them if they run into situations of population growth. This is clearly a clumsy way to go about trying to infer population size changes when the suspicion is millennia of nearly uninterrupted growth. So what was done was that Dr. Nathaniel Jensen derived a newer, much easier method for inferring population growth from the Y chromosome with growth, not stasis, as the primary foundation. Once again, and this may sound redundant, but it's important with these critics that clearly have nothing better than straw man arguments and misrepresentations. This peaceful science critic did not even bother to read Dr. Nathaniel Jensen's paper on this issue. They never addressed the big picture. Why are these predictions working so well? All they do is spout standard population genetic theory, then accuse Dr. Nathaniel Jensen of being wrong because he did not follow it. The fact is, they did not actually find any problems in Dr. Jensen's methods. All they did was reveal their bias, their evolutionary bias, because they assumed it was all erroneous. Because Dr. Jensen didn't do it their way. Because to the evolutionist, it's their way or the highway. The predictions of Dr. Jensen's method are actually working. When Dr. Jensen published his population growth data, we did not have any info from North African individuals. Unlike other populations, the population spike in Algeria doesn't start in the 1400s to 1500s. It starts in the 1700s and 1800s. If you run the numbers from Bergstrom paper on the Mozabite individuals, this is exactly what it shows. To justify Gutzik Gibbon's claim that Jensen is saying that many human populations diverged after AD 1500, she shows Dr. Jensen's human population growth reconstruction based on, that's right, the evolutionary route, which Dr. Jensen explicitly rejects in the paper. These critics are clearly not even reading past the title. Then when she shows just a small little clip from a massive collection of videos on the history of civilization, she quote minds Dr. Jensen's video series, cutting off the video before Jensen shows his justification. The factual basis, that is, for Jensen's claim. When she does finally decide to engage it and rebut the data, she cites from Wikipedia, which shows evolutionary archaeology-based dates for human divergence, which is exactly the point in question, which makes her rebuttal what? Makes it circular. The evolutionists love their circular-based arguments.